All right, let's do the calculation now and see if theory agrees with experiment. So here's the yo-yo, uh, and the mass is one kilogram. The radius, I measured all of these things previously, the radius is 15 centimeters, or 0.15 meters. And then the radius of the inner spool in here is 0.02 meters. So, great, let's go about solving this problem. And first thing to do is draw a picture. So here's the spool where the string's attached. And here's the outer discs. Uh, sort of a circle, let's see if I can get a little better. Right? And let's label these things. Let's call this R1, call that R2. And we have two forces acting on the yo-yo. We have the force of gravity, which acts at the center of the mass and points straight down. And the force of gravity, or the weight, that's equal to mg, uh, near the surface of the Earth, where we are. And then the tension force acts right here where the string is attached. And that points straight up. And I have the tension force smaller than the force of gravity since it is accelerating downward. Great. Now we can write out uh, Newton's second law. And so we have sum of the forces equals ma. And we see from our free body diagram, we have two forces. By the way, I want to make downward the positive direction since it's accelerating downward. Uh, Mg minus the force of tension, just reading off the forces from our free body diagram, well that equals ma. Excellent. So we want to find the acceleration. We don't know what the tension force is, but we have another handle. And that's Newton's uh, second law for rotation. So sum of the torques equals I alpha. And we know that uh, torque, I'll write it over here on the side, torque is equal to the force times the perpendicular distance from the rotation axis to the application of the force. And therefore, we can plug that in. Well, we have two forces. We have gravity and the force of tension. Gravity acts at the center of mass, which is the rotation axis, so our perpendicular is zero for, for gravity, and therefore has no torque. And I can prove it by not holding onto the string. We see that there is no rotation, so we know that gravity is not applying the torque. Now, the tension of the string is at some distance from the rotation axis. So it does supply a torque. So we have the uh, tension force times R1, because that's this distance here. And that equals the moment of inertia of the yo-yo. Well, the moment of the inertia of the yo-yo, it, it's comprised of two disks. Each disk has a formula mR squared. Now, but this is the mass of each disk, which is half a kilogram. So really, so I can write this in, 1 half times 0.5 r squared plus 1 half times 0.5 kilogram r2 squared. I should put in the 2 because that's how we've labeled the radius of the disk. And I've got my kilograms there. Great, so this is our formula. So if I add this together, I get a 1 half r2 squared with uh, units here of kilograms and then meters squared. Let's plug in for R2. R2 is uh, 1 half times 0.15 squared times a kilogram. And I have this written down here. 0 0.01125 kilogram meters squared. So that's the moment of inertia. Uh, I'm going to leave it as I for right now, but we have it over here. And then we have the angular acceleration. Well, the angular acceleration, if there's no slipping, that's very important, and there was no slipping in this case, the string was firmly attached and releasing as it went. The string was not sliding against the inner axle. 
So there's no slipping. Therefore, the linear acceleration is equal to r times the angular acceleration, where this is the distance from the rotation axis to the uh, point of acceleration. So we can plug that in for alpha. And so alpha is just equal to the linear acceleration over r, which in this case is r1, because that's the distance from the rotation axis to the uh, point of acceleration. And if I solve for ft, well, how would I do that? I just divide both sides by r1. And here these guys cancel. And here I get a dr1 squared in the denominator. So I get i over r1 squared times acceleration. Great. Let's plug that in for the force of tension here. And I get mg minus the force of Oops. mg minus i over r1 squared acceleration equals m a. And then if I solve for acceleration, so I'll bring this term over here, so plus this business on both sides. And I end up getting this. I get uh, mg equals ma plus i over r1 squared a. Now I'll factor out the a. And if I divide both sides by this guy right here, I get my final expression for acceleration, which is equal to mg divided by m plus i over r1 squared, and that's my acceleration. Now let's plug in the values. So, well, let me erase this stuff. So I know the moment of inertia is this value. So I get a equals 1 kilogram times the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, all divided by the 1 kilogram plus i over r1 squared. Well, the i is the 0 0.01125 kilograms meters squared, all divided by r1, which we have as 0 0.02 meters Square. And if you plug all this into your calculator, you get a result of 0 0.33, I believe. I wrote it down over here. 0 0.34 meters per second squared. Well, that's pretty good agreement with the experiment. Not bad. We can do one last thing, just for fun. If we want to know the case of a cylinder, this is a classic problem in many physics textbooks. Well, it's just a, a simple cylinder rolling down. Well, in this case, it, what we did here is a more complicated problem. We have an R1 and R2. In this case, R1 is equal to R2. So therefore, our formula for acceleration simplifies as such. So we have A equals mg all over m plus, let's plug in for i, it's one half m r squared and all over r squared. This was r2 and this was r1, but for the cylinder they're the same. These guys cancel. Now you can see that the m's cancel everywhere. So you just get g over 1 plus a half, which is equal to 2 thirds g. And that's the known acceleration for a cylinder coming down like this. Excellent. So this is just an extension. What's really nice is that our main result for the experiment we just did, the calculation agrees nicely. And mostly importantly, we now understand the physics of a yo-yo.